Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to another uh, episode of our series, um, Storytelling in Video Games. Um, I know I said that I wanted to jump straight into some uh, case studies, uh, which I do still have planned. I have those uh, in the works. Still, I've been doing some testing and uh, things of that sort, looking for games, trying to get, uh, um, uh, yeah, just trying to build up uh, a little bit of knowledge before I start recording and putting those up. Um, but today I had uh, just a few thoughts um, about storytelling that I wanted to get out there. Uh, and also I wanted to give uh, this, if you can see here, uh, this is my new um, blue mic, uh, snowball mic. And uh, I just was not happy with the sound quality that my um, webcam mic was giving me. It just sounded kind of tinny and hollow and um, I wasn't enjoying that very much. So I picked this up. Hopefully this will improve the quality a little bit and it certainly looks uh, really cool sitting on my desk. So <laughs> there's always that. Um, but anyway, uh, let's jump into our topic for today. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately about uh, character motivation in storytelling and uh, specifically <clears throat> how there seem to be way more stories uh, that are set up by something happening to the protagonist that's out of their control and them reacting to it. Um, now, of course, there's always conflict in a story, a story without conflict or without barriers to uh, the characters achieving what they want wouldn't be much of a story. It would be very boring. Um, so that's not really what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is kind of the kickoff for the story. What motivates the, the story from the very beginning? Um, and the storytelling world is full of things like, um, you know, Shakespeare's Hamlet. Hamlet's father is murdered and uh, Hamlet then reacts to that. So the story begins by something happening to the main character that is out of their control. Hamlet's father is murdered. Um, or take uh, the movie Die Hard. Um, Bruce Willis's character um, shows up for a party and terrorists attack, and he reacts. So again, something happens that's totally out of his control. The whole story is built around um, a reaction to an unforeseen uh, surprise event. Uh, and this, I mean, the lists go on and on. Um, you know, say in... Uh, in video games, uh, say Mario Brothers, um, the princess is uh, is kidnapped, so Mario has to go rescue her. Um, so this might seem very ordinary and kind of uh, unsu you know, unsurprising, unremarkable, um, but what it means is that these characters are not they are not driving the the plot from the beginning their desire, their plan, is not the focus of the story. Um, uh, take another film, Rear Window, uh, a Hitchcock movie. Um, the main character is a, is a photographer and he's uh, injured in an accident, ends up in a wheelchair in his house, um, and then adventure ensues. So again, it starts with the character not following their own motivation but having something forced on them. Um, this is a very convenient uh, and very easy to write type of story uh, because you can take any character and just start throwing disasters at them um, and watch them react. Um, but I, I struggle to think of a lot of stories where um, the character's motivation um, is what is driving the plot. Um, now there are a few, like take the Rocky movie. Um, Rocky's motivation is to be a great boxer, right? The, the whole plot is driven by his desire um, to first uh, get a good fight and then um, to try and win it. And so the whole, uh, the whole story is motivated internally by uh, the main character's desires. Um, but I think this is a much more difficult type of story to tell because uh, you have to, first of all, you have to know your character very well. And second of all, your character has to be a very interesting person all by themselves. 
Um, you know, in Die Hard, John McClane doesn't have to be an interesting person at all. Um, in fact, we don't have to know anything about him. Uh, his desires and, and wants and needs are pretty irrelevant uh, to the story, mainly because uh, the only want and need and desire of John McClane um, that's relevant to this story is basic survival instincts, right? He doesn't want to be killed. He doesn't want his wife to be killed. And in a more general sense, he doesn't want anybody else to be killed, right? So very visceral, very basic, very simple. Um, but to have a movie like Rocky, uh, you need to know why does Rocky want to be a boxer? You know, you have to get to know him as a person to understand uh, his motivations and for that story to then be interesting to watch. Um, and I, I found it um, difficult to think of a lot of examples of that type of story. Um, I did think of one earlier that now I'm kind of blanking on. Um, you know, like take uh, some other story examples. Uh, Lord of the Rings is about, um, again, something that happens to the main character. Uh, Frodo is given charge of the ring, and uh, he doesn't really have a choice about it. It just happens to him, and then he reacts. Um, say the Hobbit again, same thing. What happens? Uh, Bilbo is minding his own business, being a very uninteresting person, and uh, the dwarves show up. So um, let's just grab a few more examples that are out there. Um, uh, let's say. Um, how about Star Wars? Uh, if we look at Luke as the protagonist, um, Star Wars begins when um, Luke's parents are murdered, or his uh, aunt and uncle are murdered, right? And that kind of uh, motivates the whole rest of the story. Um, it motivates Luke to leave with uh, Obi-Wan, and then the rest of the adventure ensues. Um, so telling a story where the main character's own um, internal drive is the main plot uh, seems very difficult. Now let's think about this in terms of uh, specifically video games. Um, now it's very easy to take a video game. Uh, you create a character with which the player is meant to identify and uh, you do something to them and then the player and then the character that the player is playing have to react. Um, that's a pretty simple setup, right? And that uh, it doesn't require a lot of, um, it requires only a basic level of identification with uh, from the player to the player character, right? Um, but if we were going to say build a, a video game around the Rocky story and we ask the player to identify with the player character Rocky um, that creates a problem because we don't necessarily know that the player the actual human being playing the game uh, wants to be a boxer or or you know the motivations of the character are then forced onto the the player um, and that's a much more difficult thing, I think. That's a more difficult bridge to gap, uh, uh, or <laughs> more difficult gap to bridge in video games than it is in other types of storytelling. You know, in a book, we can write, um, we write characters, and you may or may not decide to identify with them, right? You, you always kind of have a choice. And you can read a book with uh, characters that you don't identify with at all, um, but it can still be a good story. Um, in a video game, though, it's it's very difficult to play a character uh, with which you, you know with whom you don't identify. <clears throat> um, there has to be, especially in games where you see through the main character's eyes, you know, first person style games. Um, that is implicitly creating that identification. Um, but we have to write games in such a way that th there's some level of blank slate to the character so that the the player can put themselves into that um and that's i think that's very difficult with games or with stories that are not designed around that um 
blank slate character to whom something happens and then they react. Um, and as I think about writing my own stories and you know run through various um, plots, it's it's difficult even in a in a literary sense, you know, writing um, books and using words to come up with convincing stories in that sense. Um, I feel like when I'm writing a story, when I resort to uh, you know a, a relatively generic character and something happens to and they react, I feel like that makes my character very uninteresting. Uh, that character could be anybody. Um, and then you sort of slap on uh, skills or habits or, or little details to that character to make them a little richer but at their core they're they're not an interesting person right they they don't they don't really they're not driving the story they're merely reacting um, whereas that's kind of a I, I feel like that's a detriment in um, literary writing uh, in a video game maybe that is actually more necessary um, and finding more clever ways to do that that aren't quite as obvious um, become more important. Um, you know, if I think of some of uh, my favorite video game stories, <clears throat> um, take Bioshock, uh, for example. That's a story uh, that's very much um, out of the main character's control, right? Uh, you begin the game sitting on an airplane, and within seconds, the airplane crashes. And then from that point on, you are reacting. Uh, all you do is react to things that are, are thrown at you. Um, and uh, you have very little uh, self-motivation. All your motivation is external. Um, and you know, if we think about life in this way, just in a general sense, um, it's much easier and safer to live a life that is defined by external circumstance, right? Um, and most of us do live lives like that. Uh, you know, we're, we have a, a need for, for food, uh, for shelter, so we don't freeze to death in the winter. And I define those as external needs because they're not coming from our will. It's not that I will that I want to eat, it's that eating is a requirement that's forced on me by by the universe right and I have to do it um, earning money and thus having a job is an external requirement that's put on you and so most of us live um, most of our life constrained by these external requirements and that's the context in which our own personal stories are happening um, but if you if you ever experience a a part of your life or a, a moment in your life where you have an extremely high degree of freedom, um, you find that you can't rely on those external uh, motivators anymore because they're, they're gone. Um, and uh, when you analyze that kind of thing, you find that uh, discovering and nurturing those internal motivators uh, is, is a more difficult problem than it looks like from the other side. Um, so the reason I wanted to bring that up is just to show that uh, these storytelling problems, you know, how we deal with characters, how we deal with plot, um, what kind of conflicts we, we do in our stories, these aren't relevant just to art. Um, they are relevant to our actual lives because um, like we talked about in a previous video, you know, storytelling and and real life, fantasy versus actuality, um, in the mind are very, very similar. Um, in fact, I read a, a study the other day that uh, was saying it seems that the way the brain distinguishes between fiction and fact is just how personally relevant it is to us. Um, and it's quite possible that uh, fiction, in a lot of cases, is much more personally relevant to us than fact is, right? Um, so the study did things like um, ask people to name off uh, members of their family and then name off uh, fictional characters. And the parts of the brain um, that deal with uh, 
uh, how personally relevant a topic is, you know, they are, yeah, they light up more with um, real things than fictional things. Um, but uh, that was only, you know, that that was asked from the point of view of. Oh, let me let me back up. I'm kind of getting confusing here. Um, the upshot of the study essentially was that they're saying the the brain's way of telling the difference between fantasy and reality is this this personal relevance. You know, our family members are more personally relevant to us uh, than a, a fictional character in general. Um, but certain fictional characters can be way more relevant to us than um, than real people. You know. Uh, you know, take uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, Michael Jordan has no personal relevance to me whatsoever. Um, but say uh, a character in a book, um, you know, say like uh, um, Ender Wigan from uh, Ender's Game and, and those books, uh, that character especially in Speaker for the Dead, which is one of my all-time favorite books, that character is very personally relevant to me. Uh, he's fictional, right? He's not a real person, um, but he is very, very real and relevant to me, much more than you know Michael Jordan is, who is an actual real person. Um, so because we, we deal with these things very similarly in our, in our brain, um, storytelling is, in a lot of cases, just as important as as actual reality and how we, um, you know, how we analyze real things, you know, history and politics and and that kind of stuff. Uh, we all know is very important, but storytelling, I don't think we usually think about that way. Um, but I think it is very relevant. So anyway, uh, the the topic today was just to address uh, a little bit about character motivation and. Um, external motivation versus internal motivation. And I'll continue thinking about this and maybe be able to come up with a few more good examples of internally motivated uh, stories um, that end up being uh, being interesting. So um, in any case, I'm still working on those case studies, so look forward to those uh, in the future. Um, but until then, I will uh, keep putting up other videos um, now that I've got this uh, sound upgrade, that'll help me, I think, improve things a little bit. And uh, I've been doing some uh, upgrades of memory, and I, I think I'll have to do some some other technical stuff uh, in the next few days. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Please check out the rest of the videos in this series and uh, other things on my channel if you find them interesting. Uh, hit the like button, give me comments, feedback is always appreciated, and uh, subscribe if you'd like. So. Anyway, uh, I guess everybody have a great day, and I'll see you next time.